For the College of Complexes, please come to order. My name is Tim. I'm going to be uh, moderating this building tonight. We also are introducing a second cameraman. My name is Lance, who will be uh, getting into a different perspective. Again, I'd like to call the College of Complexes to order. Tonight we'll be having three speakers on the deep state from three different perspectives. Ellen, and we'll be having Ellen Corley, Ted Aranda, and Charles Paydock. And what will be the College of Complexes consists of the following format. The first part will be a brief announcements period. We ask that they be announcements and not uh, rebuttals. The second part will be our three speakers. Then we'll have a panel of questions and answers for those three speakers. And then at the end, we'll have our infamous rebuttal. All right, tonight we have a panel of three speakers. The deep, the deep state from three different perspectives. Our three speakers are, number one, Ellen Corley, states the NSA and CIA covert operations are now getting away with literally revising history in both domestic and foreign markets by a means of a variety of operations. She will be naming names of the deep state actors and present suggestions on how to prosecute them for state crimes against democracy, SCADs. Ted Aranda, who has spoken on several false flag operations, stated the question of the deep state gets at the heart of the true nature of the representative government NT. This type of political system is in fact oligarchy, not a democracy. And Charles Paydock maintains that people don't know that federal employees are the fourth branch of the U.S. government and when he, in many ways uh, autonomous from the executive. They don't leave when presidents do and when presidents come and go. It is alleged that former President Obama is coordinating a deep state resistance to Trump. Tonight, because of the nature of Charlie's PowerPoint, he seems to be the most well organized, we'll have him go first. No, no. Oh, yeah. Wow. No. All right, you want to yes. go? Oh, okay, Ellen, are you ready? Yes, yeah, sir. All right, we'll give you uh, 20, 20 to 25 minutes. Oh, boy. Each wow. of our speakers get that. About 20 minutes each so we can get two questions and answers. Let's welcome uh, Ellen Corley. Ellen, if you're ready, come on up. Okay, um, so thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, I'm uh, Ellen Corley. I, uh, this is my third talk here, and I started coming here a couple of years ago. Um, uh, thanks to hearing about it from John and um, Doug at the United for Democracy Now um, event. And um, I don't know if you can hear me, it's kind of loud. Uh, just go ahead and keep talking. Okay, I'll just keep talking. You can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Bye. Um, yeah. All right. I'm, I apologize. This week I didn't have time to come up with a presentation that I'm going to read um, because I was sitting in front of my television. Um, I, first it was with the Laquan McDonald trial. Um, I held up my camera, my Facebook Live, and kind of narrated what I, I think the alternative news, you know, uh, maybe a deep state perspective on the trial and how it was uh, really an example of deep state, you know, a biased judicial um, system. And that that's really, for today, that's the hypothesis I think I'll try to weave through this talk um, because you saw the same kind of bias in the way that the the Kavanaugh investigations didn't they didn't even investigate um, you know the Kavanaugh hearings 
they were pushing this guy on. He is a part of the Federalist Society, which is the deep state. Okay, they are a, they were funded by the um, Bradley Foundation and all these billionaires who basically were part of the OSS um, during Hitler, you know, World War II, and essentially, they, the World War II ended, and we thought, oh, we won, you know, CIA's good, um, you know, public state's good, democracy's good, everything's good. The truth is, we had funded um, these billionaires, uh, and with particularly, we've got the, um, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Morgans, the same ones that took over our treasury, the Federal Reserve privatized it. They, um, they've been running the show for a long time, okay? Um, that's the deep state in a nutshell. And what we see is what they, what we don't see is what they funded through, how many of you have heard of capital cities? I'm ready to You know, capital cities, okay. Um, how many of you, I doubt you knew that my stepfather was the um, founder of, uh, or the, the chairman of Capital uh, Manhattan Institute, which was founded by Capital Cities, uh, Anthony Fisher, William Casey. So the head of the OSS CIA, William Casey, um, you know, deep state operative, funded the Manhattan Institute. And it seemed like a nice group for him to get involved with in his retirement. But the truth is they manufacture false science. They manufacture propaganda specifically on, um, to reinforce elitist, Nazi fascist uh, issues like there is no such thing as racial profiling. Uh, there is no such thing as climate change problems. There is so that these other, you know, that the bell jar, Charles Murray, um, you know, they published that, that says, oh, you know, black people are inferior, so um, let's just disband all their public schools, at private schools through Betsy DeVos. All the people in the Trump administration are funded by the Manhattan Institute and the Heritage Foundation and the Federalist Society. So basically, we are getting a and that there's no other word for it, a fascist deep state, right? A fascist deep state, extreme right wing. You know, that's what it is. That's why Doug and I are members of Refuse Fascism, and I was proud to see them down there yesterday. And um, all through the last few months, the Laquan McDonald hearing, I, I felt guilty that I'm not out there marching and standing with them. And um, but the. What I do instead is research and get on the internet, the Facebook. This last two weeks with my Facebook Live, you know, telling the truth to hopefully a broader audience. Um, you know, it, it's, um, it really is kind of a helpful exercise because one thing, it helps you me get a, a theme that goes through all of this is the media, propaganda, um, the, the way I read in this book on Hitler and the Nazis, that as soon as Hitler got the media, it was easy. The big lies are easier than the little ones as long as you control the media, you control the narrative, you control history, right? And so if this is why what I study, the books I have, the, um, the sources that I emulate to, in my approach, it's a scientific um, revision of revisionist history. You know, we are, you go in there and you look at each lie and, you know, who generated it? Where did it come from? Um, and try to correct it, you know, correct the record. At one point I thought, oh, lies, it's a bad problem, but it's so pervasive and I basically can't figure out how to um, to get it to the Supreme Court that we have the right to the truth. Let's just, you know, can, can you get to that? Um, Ted just says, you know, I was, Ted will be talking after me. Um, you know, I 
crazy if I think I could run for mayor and get 12,000 interviews uh, or signatures. Are you ready? Um, but the reason I say I'm going to do it, and it's a good focal point, I, maybe the truth will set us free. You okay. know, that's my strategy and idea. You know, um, I want okay. to expose the big lies of the, um, you know, that basically is corruption at, at, of the fascist level. Um, Hi, honey. That we saw this week with the senators. You have to wonder why would senators put through a guy like that? Um, you know, this Chuck Grassley is he is he just senile or um, yeah, yeah. you know that's part of it. But it, it, it it's it's just so odd that they're not able to make up their own mind. There's clearly a conspiracy. A, a there they and. My hypothesis, which seems to hold true, is that they're, um, the lobbyist, APAC, the NRA, the biggest lobbyist of the, you know, the Federalist Society, the Manhattan Institute, um, you know, they're all interlocking um, groups there, have, they've run these candidates against the candidates that were challenging I've seen this specifically with Israel, you know, I, Paul Finlay was here in Illinois. He dared speak out against um, Israel and the war on Palestine. Einstein and Hannah Rent were speaking out against that too in, in the late 40s and early 50s. They published a signed letter. This is just like Nazis, what, what's going on in Israel. With, um, and They're Jewish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, they again, it turns out, um, I've just recently read, makes sense, really, this air gun that Rahm Emanuel's father and Benjamin Netanyahu's father and, and Menachem Begin and were the air gun terrorists that they, they are like, we're going to take over this Israel for us no matter what. They're, this is not, you know, a because we, we're, you know, like gold in my ear and we deserve it, you know, um, because we suffered in the Holocaust. They are really the Holocaust. They, the war on, they came up with the idea of the war on terror, but basically it's a war of terror, right? That this is, this is the pattern of the deep state. That I, a book I picked up today, I mean, it starts to make sense if you just look at this, world it's like a deep state research method or um, you know look for the lies but one thing that identifies um, cults just like fascism uh, the book a woman that studied cults is that there's a deceptive of two types of truth so that um, within themselves you know the, the where the we's um, you know they're loyal to themselves but not to the others but there's this, um, anyhow, the duplicity, you know, we're, it's, so there, it creates two versions of the truth. Um, and it separates us and them. Actually, Carl Schmitt was Hitler's crown jurist, his jurisprudence, his judge, who came up with the idea of um, burn down the Reichstag, suspend all the people's rights because we're, the communists are coming to get us, the Russians, and, you know, let's declare war on the world. Uh, so this, he sent Leo Strauss over here, and, um, you know, they funded him at University of Chicago, and, and he is at the essence of this Federalist Society, who are all Kavanaugh, Gorsuch, Roberts, Thomas, every one of the Republicans are part of this uh, Carl Schmitt, uh, philosophy, they call it political theology, right? But basically it's a cult. And um, the strategy of tension is their idea for the Fourth Reich. It's a leave-behind army of, of um, false flag terrorist attacks, which we have 9-11. Um, they, they started with, um, in Spain, you know, fighting, or Italy, fighting the communists, but it's always the other guy that did it. And then, okay, now we'll be the army, right? So they, they start civil wars, the dirty wars in South America. They fund both sides of them. 
and um, like you've got the Democrats and the Republicans now, the liberals, they, you know, fund both sides so that it can be, um, we're divided and conquered, a strategy of tension. They can, they, you know, spent, the latest thing is 26 trillion, which I'm determined to, to show where those numbers, you, part of, we're not allowed to see the war budget. You, you know, you look in there and they go, okay, we'll admit we're spending, you know, what, three billion or, I, but, and then that got up to three billion and then now, because they're probably, because they're borrowing and paying interest and who knows what, uh, it's, you know, let's make it 26 trillion. Um, it's just crazy. There was like quadrillions lost in these financial meltdowns, but part of it is, they, you know, you go back to this this Rothschild and the, the taking over our Federal Reserve. So the main thing is look for the solutions. How can we challenge this? I um, I think we can. You know, if we investigate it and prosecute it as criminal state crimes against democracy. If these are, um, you know, but first we have to be willing amongst ourselves to stop calling these conspiracy theories because, um, I mean, the truth is uh, there's books and, uh, you know, Andy is one of the best read people I know and, and I've, I've got a thousand books on this subject too myself. Um, I am, this, we need theories. Darwin is a theory and, and then you test it. Does it hold up? Does it help you all have a conversation? Freud is a theory. Yeah, you have conversations. You can talk about the same version of reality and what's going on, evolution. You know, the conspiracy theory is, I mean, a conspiracy takes two people doing something wrong. So why hasn't it been prosecuted? Let's look at why hasn't conspiracy been prosecuted. Why hasn't anything been investigated or prosecuted? All these cover-ups. Why has 9-11 never been investigated? or prosecuted, or the, right, the cover-up of it. Um, you know, Kavanaugh was at, was at, uh, in the White House with Cheney and his wife and Rumsfeld covering this stuff up. And then when the Democrats are saying, um, can we see the emails from all the years before and after 9-11 when you and Rumsfeld and were orchestrating 9-11? And he's like, um, no, you know, uh, they, their argument was Bill Burke, some Bush librarian, didn't have time to provide it to him. Meanwhile, you know, they, they provide, they spend millions of dollars saying Hillary Clinton's email, she used to serve her in her basement, you know, and, um, and orchestrate Benghazi. She didn't, you know, that's false flag terrorism. They orchestrate it and then they spend millions of dollars drumming up hatred for her and all liberals and the truth and while they the facts are that Karl Rove and Brett Kavanaugh used the art the Republican National Committee server for um, the entire time and but as long as it's not in the media and the prosecutors don't pick it up the judges don't pick it up it's not investigated Republicans win liberals lose these Republicans, number one, are not conservatives, and they've got to watch it there how they lie with the language. The language of, uh, you know, that they're conservative, they are, they're fascists, they're Nazi right-wing extremists. This is what uh, the deep state is that, that we have to. Okay, time's up. All right. All right. So what are we supposed to do about it? <laughs> I'll talk about that next time. Thank you. <laughs> talk about it. You're right. Hey, man. Uh, 16 minutes. Introduce that. Our next speaker is Taylor Randa. Uh, he's famous for his talks at the College of Complexes here. Tonight he's going to be talking about some things related to the deep state. Okay. Come on up, Ted. You okay? All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Andy. Yep. Um, got about 16 minutes. Okay. I might go to lunch.
<laughs> okay, well, I'm going to get right into it. <coughs> Excuse me. First thing we have to understand to understand the deep state is that the United States is not a democracy. Ordinary Americans do not rule in this country. And we know this is the case for at least three reasons, completely apart from the question of the deep state. One is the political structure. The U.S. does not have a democratic political structure. It has an oligarchical structure with oligarchical institutions. The federal government consists of a tiny number of officials, one president, 535 congresspersons, and nine Supreme Court justices. That's less than 600 persons out of 300 million Americans. <coughs> These are the, persons, are the persons with official power in our system, not we the people. So this is technically, literally, oligarchy the rule of the few. The fact that these few individuals, apart from the Supreme Court justices, are elected is immaterial. The elected masters are still masters. So, uh, the second reason that we know we don't have democracy, the broad outcomes of the political process. The wishes and the welfare of the people as a whole are, are completely ignored by the government, whereas the government does carry out the policies favored by and beneficial to the wealthy few. Martin Gillens and Benjamin Page of Princeton University and Northwestern University, two perfectly respectable academic institutions, proved scientifically in a rigorous study of 1,800 policy cases the utter powerlessness of the American people. They found that, quote, it makes very little difference what the general public, even large minorities, excuse me, large majorities thinks. The preferences of the average American have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. On the other hand, Economic elites have a quite substantial, highly significant impact on the policy. The correlation that they found between the preferences of average Americans on the one hand and the government implementing policies for average Americans on the other was 0.05%, practically random chance. But the correlation between the preferences of wealthy Americans and the government implementing policies for them was 0.78, almost 80%. Are you ready to order? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So the government uh, basically serves the rich, and uh, I should note that um, the authors had data only for moderately wealthy people, not the seriously wealthy, so the correlation would be even higher uh, in reality for the very rich. They concluded, quote, in the United States, the majority does not rule. America's claims to being a democratic society are seriously threatened. And uh, I, I think this is uh, an understatement. Uh, in fact, their study completely disproves the notion you, that the U.S. is a democracy. The third reason we know we don't have democracy. The constant false flag events and massive deceptions of the public which profoundly shape the course and state of the nation. Thank you. These, uh, and I've spoken about all of these here, uh, the JFK assassination, RFK assassination, the Apollo moon landing hoax, 9-11 of course, aerosol spraying, uh, otherwise known as chemtrails, and the many mass shooting hoaxes. All of these, if you look into them, okay, get beyond the bladder, are sheer uh, deceptions, nonsense, uh, foolishness. These are not anomalous <laughs> incidents, but rather manifestations of a pattern. Deception is the government's modus operandi. In other words, lying like there's no tomorrow. These deceptions are by definition carried out without the public even knowing about them, much less deciding to carry them out or approving them. Therefore, this is not democracy. So the people do not rule. Who does? Who is the actual government? In my analysis, there are three components, and I'll call them A, B, and C. A is the official open government of our civics class lessons. In other words, Congress, President, and the Supreme Court. That's a component, okay, one component, along with state governments and city com uh, governments of a similar form. But this is only one component of the real government, and it's the least significant and the most subservient. The conventional notion that this is the entire government and that it's responsive to the citizens is flat wrong. B, and this of course is getting more interesting here, the shadow government, coterminous or parallel with the official government but largely independent of it. This network consists of public officials, government agencies, especially the clandestine agencies like the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, and quasi-governmental quasi -governmental agencies like the Federal Reserve all clearly working on an agenda other than the wishes or the welfare of the people or even the direction of Congress. <coughs> and C, powerful groups and persons, for the most part completely outside of the nominal government, who control both the open government and the shadow government. 
This is big money. Wall Street, the corporate elite, the establishment, the oligarchy. In other words, the, the mega rich who own the major banks and corporations. This is the ultimate power in the United States. And here's the relationship between the three components. The members of A, the official government, are the oligarchy's servants, tools, lackeys, puppets. Bought and paid for through campaign contributions, political sponsorship, lobbying, in other words, legalized bribes, perks of all kinds, lucrative corporate jobs after a political office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you have only a handful of individuals occupying the highest offices of government, the elite will always find ways to control them. <clears throat> the members of B, the shadow government, are the oligarchy's agents, literally. Uh, the professional operatives, mercenaries, hitmen. Okay, that's the CIA we're talking about and agencies like that. So B, the shadow government, plus C, the oligarchy, that's what the deep state is. The official government is the odd man out, a mere sideshow. And this has been known by people who would know for a long time. Joseph Kennedy, the, pa the patriarch of the Kennedy clan, said 50 men run America. Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter said, the real rulers in Washington are invisible and exercise power from behind the scenes. FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, said the real truth of the matter is that a financial element in the large centers has owned the government ever since the days of Andrew Jackson. Yeah. New York Mayor John Hillen, in 1922, spoke of the invisible government, headed by the Rockefeller Standard Oil Interests and a small group of powerful banking houses who virtually run the, gov the U.S. government for their own selfish purposes. Okay, so now I'll move on to a couple of deep state institutions and deep state events. Starting with ALEC, and, and I'm starting at the uh, state level. The, uh, okay, ALEC is the American Legislative Exchange Council. <clears throat> is everybody from, uh, at least have you heard of ALEC? Oh, yeah. Okay, a lot of people have it. This is an organization that gets large corporations and state politicians together as quote unquote equal members with equal decision making power in secret meetings and relationships to produce model bills that benefit the corporations. And I put equal in quotes, and I'll explain that in a second. The legislators then take these bills back to the state governments and introduce them as their own, which is completely duplicitous, of course. Over a thousand such bills are introduced every year across the country, and hundreds are passed. And I said, I put equally in quotes, because this would be bad enough. Our legislators, uh, supposedly our representatives, are supposed to have sovereign power over corporations, not merely be their partners. But in fact, it's even worse than this. The corporations are clearly the boss in this relationship. For their services, the legislators get luxurious paid vacations, they get to meet wealthy and important potential donors at the national level, and they get, and they get the opportunity to move up in position and status within the national political hierarchy. ALEC is completely funded by very large corporations and foundations, and among these, the most important are those owned or controlled by the Koch brothers. The second institution I'll talk about, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is supposedly the nation's central bank, but it's not a government institution. Although the board members are selected by the president and approved by Congress, but this is next to meaningless. And it's not even a single bank. It's a private banking cartel. Its books are not open to the public, and Congress has never audited it. It collects billions of dollars in interest annually and distributes the profits to its private shareholders. The Fed was created uh, basically by the Morgans, Rockefellers, and Roth Rothschilds in 1913, and this is quite well documented. These mega plutocrats were the Fed's major stockholders and controllers in the beginning, and the Fed's ownership is still concentrated in the hands of a few super rich families and multinational financial corporations. The Fed, of course, has enormous power. It controls and manipulates the country's money supply, it regulates the entire network of commercial banks and financial, financial markets, it lowers and raises the nation's interest rates at will, and it creates money through credit out of thin air. So more than any other institution or agency in the nation is the Federal Reserve, a private, strictly for-profit organization that controls the U.S. economy. And it's actually unconstitutional. Uh, because uh, the Constitution says that Congress has the power to quote unquote coin money and regulate the value thereof, not any other institution. The Federal Reserve works closely with the Treasury Department, and its monetary policies clearly cater to the interests of the banking industry and the country's financial overlords. This explains the 2008 bank bailout, only the latest of many similar bailouts in the past century. One scholar said, 
The Fed has turned monetary policy into an instrument of further enriching the rich and the means of redistribution from the bottom up. This is no speculation or conspiracy theory. It is undeniable facts and figures. Second uh, brief state event I'll touch on is the JFK assassination. In the 1960s, JFK and the American establishment and the American establishment were mortal enemies. The elite were virulently hostile towards Kennedy's economic and foreign policies, probably most significantly his bypassing of the Federal Reserve to take control of the nation's money supply for the public interest instead of the plutocrats' interest. The establishment, the establishment media, like Time uh, Magazine, Life, Fortune, the Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, um, almost all owned or controlled by Morgan and Rockefeller-related financial entities, attacked the president mercilessly during his term. And the leader of the pack was David Rockefeller, uh, John D. Rockefeller's grandson and the chairman of the board of Chase Manhattan Bank, the most powerful financial institution in the world. David Rockefeller publicly and pointedly spoke out against JFK's policies. The same establishment press that had lambasted Kennedy over his policies magically solved the crime of the president's assassination from their corporate offices and newsrooms within 24 hours. And then, without any evidence to support their theory, they led the way in pushing the lone assassin meme. In turn, the FBI and the Justice Department were determined to quote unquote, settle the dust. That's what they said. On Oswald's sole guilt and quote, produce the desired result. In other words, they were clearly engaged in a cover-up, not a real investigation. It was establishment figures such as Eugene Rostow, Dean Acheson, and Joseph Alsop who first proposed an easily controlled presidential commission instead uh, to investigate the assassination instead of the more proper and logical Texas Board of Inquiry or congressional investigation. And then they were able to get this public body, the Warren Commission, established. The Warren Commission was led by two ace establishment henchmen, former CIA Director Alan Dulles, who was quite possibly the mastermind of the assassination to begin with, and John McCloy, whose own biographer called the chairman of the American establishment. Both of these men were very close associates of David Rockefeller, and of course, the Warren Commission came to the same predetermined conclusion as the establishment press and the government's investigatory agencies, namely that Oswald did it and did it alone. Yeah. Donald Gibson, uh, uh, one of the foremost scholars of the JFK assassination, said this was essential, essentially an establishment cover-up. Their authorship of the cover-up, in turn, makes them the prime suspects in the assassination. And then 9-11. Kevin Ryan, in his book, Another 19, and Barbara Honegger, uh, in her excellent documentary, Behind the Smoke Curtain, uncover a whole menagerie of interconnected deep state operatives, mercenaries, revolving in and around government, in and out of government, law firms, investment firms, and intelligence agencies since the Nixon administration. It's like a giant mafia, and the U.S. government is revealed as being a recruiting and organizing center for mega-criminals, a colossal cesspool. At the center of this network in 2001 were Dick Cheney and, and Donald Rumsfeld, who had been working together in the shadow government for decades. Ryan says simply, Dick and Don were running the show on 9-11. Other involved figures included Richard Armitage, Frank Carlucci, Rudy Giuliani, and Richard Clark. Honegger, uh, Honegger identifies a cabal of neocon Zionist PNAC signatories as the perpetrators of 9-11. And PNAC is the um, project for a new American century, and they wrote, uh, wrote this paper, Rebuilding America's Defenses, which described their entire plan. They laid it out completely for us to read, they, uh, which was to create a new Pearl Harbor as a catalyst to initiate the U.S. conquest of the world. And that's why they're in the Middle East carrying on as they are right now. And this includes Paul Wolf this cabal includes Paul Wolfowitz, Dolph Zakheim, Scooter Libby, Richard Pearl, John Bolton, Jeff Bush, and Condoleezza Rice, among others. Honegger concludes, this interlocking cabal took control of the ma major levers of military and intelligence power of the United States government. That is, they became the US government with the motive, means, opportunity, and power to effect their new Pearl Harbor, quote unquote. The deep state factions described by Ryan and Honegger undoubtedly carried out 9-11. <clears throat> and now I'll just say a little bit about uh, deep state organizations and individuals. And I'm going to focus mainly on the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, partly because uh, I have limited time and partly because that's the major deep state group in this country. These groups and people infiltrate, infiltrate the government through the executive branch. 
the President's cabinets and the executive departments, especially the State, Defense, and Treasury departments. The CFR, uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, was formed by the American financial elite in 1921 to pursue their goal of American empire and world dominion. The CFR's founding president was John Davis, J.P. Morgan's personal attorney. The vice president of the CFR was Paul Kravitz, a Morgan attorney. The chairman was Russell Leffingwell, a Morgan partner. So researchers have noted that the CFR was originally funded and dominated by the Morgans, but within a decade or two, it was the Rockefellers who, who controlled it. Today, it's funded by numerous Fortune 500 corporations and by foundations like Ford and Rockefeller Foundations. At any given time, during the last three quarters of a century, about half of all top foreign policy officials were CFR members, including most of the secretaries of state, secretaries of defense, and secretaries of the treasury. Almost all of the CIA directors have been CFR members. And this kind of thing has been going on in all administrations, one after the other, both Republican and, Republican and Democrat. In fact, the CFR has been called the real State Department. And researchers like Lawrence Shoup have concluded that the CFR has, quote unquote, de facto control over the state. Relatively recent and prominent members of the CFR, I mean, there's a huge long list, uh, I couldn't possibly go through a whole lot of them. And the Trilateral Commission, which is an internationalized offshoot of the CFR, created by uh, David Rockefeller. Okay, so the Trilateral Commission is an offshoot of the CFR. Uh, and these individuals include Al Gore, Colin Powell, James Woolsey, Lloyd Benston, George Stephanopoulos, Alan Greenspan, John Kerry, and Joe Biden. Okay, all, just about all names that you know, everybody knows, right? So the CFR, um, CFR and Trilateral Commission members control not only the government, but also the major media. The founders or leaders of all the major TV networks and the major print press have practically, uh, in other words, practically every uh, mainstream media news outlet have been or are CFR or Trilateral Commission members. This includes the biggest news anchors and columnists, uh, columnists excuse me, like Dan Rather, Bill Moyers, Diane Sawyer, David Brinkley, Ted Koppel, Barbara Walters, John Chancellor, Marvin Kalb, Daniel Shore, George Will, Tom Brokaw, Judy Woodruff, Brian Williams, Robert Neal, Jim Lehrer, and I could go on and on. <laughs> right, you get the picture. They're, they're with the Council of Foreign Relations. Council of Foreign Relations, or Trilateral Commission. Um, there are also outstanding intermediaries between the elite leaders themselves and the government. These are the high servants of the oligarchy. And one of these is the infamous Henry Kissinger, a Council on Foreign Relations member. Yeah, a couple of Okay. Well, uh, and he was brought up by Nelson Rockefeller. Um, in fact, he was given a $50,000 gift way back in the day, which in, uh, this must have been 50s or early 60s, something like that. And that was a, a decent amount of money in those days for a uh, non-rich person like uh, Henry Kissinger. And but of course, he became eventually Richard Nixon's Secretary of State. Another one, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski, CFR. Um, his writings impressed, he was an academic, and his writings impressed David Rockefeller, who then took him under his wing, and he rose to become Jimmy Carter's national security advisor. So these two men were highly placed functionaries who worked for higher powers than mere presidents. Another more recent functionary is former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Here's what she said when speaking at the CFR's brand new Washington branch uh, versus the New York City headquarters. Okay, they opened up a new branch in Washington, D.C. Here's what she said at that uh, like inauguration. I am delighted to be here in these new headquarters. I have often been I have often been to the mothership in New York City, but it's good to have an outpost of the council right here down the street from the State Department. We get a, a lot of advice from the council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to be told what we should be doing and how we should think about the future. Can you believe that? This is nothing less than an admission that the Council on Foreign Relations, a private rich persons club, is the entity that sets the nation's policies and tells elected officials like Clinton what to do. That is the deep state. Do you have something real quick? No questions. We'll take no it. We'll, we'll take no. it. Charlie, no. let's go. Come on, Charlie, you're up. You're up. No. What's wrong with you? You're up, Charlie. There's nothing wrong with Charlie. Charlie. One week to the next. You know, you know. Give us a hand. We'll have questions and answers in about uh, 20 minutes. All right, Charlie, you here. Charlie is through with the final. If somebody can't follow the rules, get out of here, you know? Come on now.
like children. All right. Yeah, I bought literature there on the back. Uh, this is the Fed book, which you can find many, many articles uh, related uh, to what I'm going to be talking about here tonight. And what do we got here? Leon. Charlie, you know how to operate the remote. Look right at the screen in front of you. Oh, okay. You just where's the uh, red Press light it? though? You gotta move over. No, it's right there. Just, just, just point at the computer, Charlie. The red light's not on. It's on. It's on. Go, Charlie. It's working. Is it the pointer. Where's the red pointer? It's a bad memory. Hey, you were the most organized. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know where the point is. <laughs> well, that's what I'm asking. Alright. Alright, the deep state. Its origins and operations. Here I'm going to present to you quickly incontrovertible proof. Incontrovertible proof that a force operating with impunity uh, controls operations in the United States government. That's a pretty bold gesture, but I'll back it up. Anyhow, the deep state. When did it start? Who's in it? Where is it? And what does it do? Now, I'm going to disarm my previous colleagues here, but many NGOs, non-government organizations, or, or ideology advocates, I'll call them, are mistaken for it. Uh, but these are associations uh, with limited interests, influence, aims, or advocacies. They have specific interests, aims, influences, and have advocacy, and do not qualify, in my mind, to merit the, as a deep state operative. They are they trying to influence affairs? Most assuredly. Are they having success at it? We don't know. Uh, but these are assertions like that. In 1770, William Pitt became the sermon, uh, talked about it. He said in the United Kingdom, there is something behind the throne greater than the king himself. And today, in the face of what appears to be a broad, highly coordinated effort to destroy Donald Trump, Americans are waking up in huge numbers to the fact that there is a hidden power behind the throne in America, too. That's what we're going to see right here. By the way, everything I'm giving you here is factual, not an assertion. All right, uh, this is the only thing, the only ones we get by that have a lot of reading to do, but you've got to define your terms. But a deep state, from my perspective, is a political situation in a country where the civilian authorities, whether these be intelligent and, or administrative agencies, do not respond to the political leadership. It takes the form of entrenched, unelected career civil servants, such as myself, <laughs> who act to further their own interests. And I can verify this, either for job security, enhanced uh, power and authority, as soon as I've seen that, uh, they may have ideological goals and objectives, or they simply want to further the growth of the agency that they work in. There is a lot of that. And they do this by three ways. Obstructing, resisting, and subverting the policies of those who are elected. So I'm sorry, my friend, they do not. You, you talk about these elected officials. They're not it. Anyhow, there's a little background. Now let's go back and pass, retreat. But the United States Civil Service began as reform, intended to bring about good government. Uh, and it grew in time, and we're going to see this, in size and scope in those two dimensions. But it is an unelected government employees, not the elected ones, Ted, uh, with the vast powers over foreign affairs. Whoops. Foreign affairs, you said? Oh, Turn back on on this. It's going to be the. You look like you're going forward, not backwards. You gotta go back. You gotta go the wrong way, Tom. Go to the beginning. Yeah, you gotta go the other way, Tom. The other way? Yeah. She just said I'm going the wrong way. 
Uh, all right. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Now get, get me back on screen, Tim. Okay. size and scope. Um, it originally began, the there was a, there was a system called the spoil system in place. And it came about, it started actually under the presidency, way back of Andrew Jackson, who first started this thing of bringing in his pals and rewarding them with political offices. Uh, someone not often talked about, but President Hayes was enamored with election reform. Uh, and he used competitive examinations uh, that we're, that still is in place. I had to submit some credentials in order, academic credentials. I had to pay to get them submitted to qualify for a position. This is still in place. They're very rigid about that. However, in 1881, uh, an office seeker killed the president because he was disgruntled about getting a job. And as a result, in 1883, the Civil Service Act was established, establishing the civil service. Oops. Well, this is where it just. You owe your job to an assassin. You're going too fast. You gotta go back. You gotta go back. Hundred year old job first. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Um, so in 1883, we had the Civil Service Reform Act uh, remained in place, but now there's something called enabling legislation uh, in which uh, establish civil service as a career, as an occupation. Uh, in 1917, my own organization was established regarding federal employees. I guess none of you have identified that as a deep state organization. But the major thing that we're living under right now, 1978, the Civil Service Reform Act established uh, collective bargaining in the government and some other things like termination only for just cause with appeal rights and so forth. So this is a major piece of legislation that affects things now. And this came about because um, the uh, one of Jimmy Carter after the uh, Watergate affair. But this is fascinating here. The purpose of this legislation that, that the government is organized under right now, is the intention is to invest more, more authority in managers while simultaneously protecting employees from authority. And it, the idea was to create more bureaucratic officials involved with policy making rather than administration through the major changes in the United States government. Okay, now in terms of the workforce, it's relatively small. It's less than 1% of the population. As an employer, significantly less than some retail, big box retailers and so forth. Okay, one of the things that happens is the employee, all employees, upon taking position in the government, take this oath. I had to stand up in the middle of the room. I felt a little awkward at the time. But we take uh, an oath uh, of, uh, to the country and not to the president. And you don't have to read all of this, but I always like this phrase in here that you will not, uh, you, you take this oath without, you have no purpose of evasion. Now, do I look a guy who would have a purpose of evasion here? Yes. <laughs> Anyhow, another thing about the, the federal deep state is that there's further legislation that it operates under, and this one I like, it's called prohibited personnel practices. They're posted all over the federal government, if you look around. But this is the five is the U.S. Code. And any employee has the authority 
any employee who has authority to direct others, including the president, is prohibited from discriminating against any employee on the basis of their political views, and they cannot coerce political activity. And this is uh, administered by the Office of Special Counsel. Believe you me, they do do it. Uh, now, one thing about the deep state, the federal workforce is they do not leave when presidents do. We watch them come and go. And it's a secret shout of the fourth branch of government. Um, in many ways, autonom autonomous from the cabinet and Congress, it, it's the ability to pursue its own ideas of the national interest, free from all checks and balances, there are none, and free from the law itself in many regards. Now estimates of its size, I've seen some figures that some people say, well, it's the seventh floor of the State Department building, and uh, I think it's more a nationwide operation from my perspective as a national officer representing employees. Um, one other thing you have to keep in mind is that the size of the federal workforce has not increased in size, no matter what you may hear from conservative TV, but its scope has significantly increased. The workforce is about the same as when Eisenhower was president, but at the same time dealing with matters which didn't exist. And believe you me, there are plenty of social programs which simply didn't exist if going back to the 50s. It's structurally, it's spread out. 85% of the federal workforce uh, is not situated in Washington, D.C. or in that metropolitan area. 85%. It's divided up into 10 regions. Uh, we are in Region 5, traditionally. Um, I've, I've gotten around the country. I would, I've handled basically 5, 4, and 9 uh, were the areas that I have responsibility for. So, all right, but it's a dispersed element, and that's what I mean, it's not one place. Now, what does the, the thing that gives the, the federal deep state authority is its affiliations. And this is where your assorted organizations come in. They're not the whole number one issue. They're only adjuncts of us. <laughs> They're affiliates. Associates, and you can see there the mainstream media, multinational NGOs, all the organizations you talk about, military industrial complex, and there at the bottom might be through it in the Council of Foreign Relations and the other trilateral commissions, things like that. There's all kinds of associations. The Encyclopedia of Associations has well over 100,000 associations in it, and I don't know how you could selectively choose from one of those and say, these are the deep state ones. No one has that much authority. <laughs> now, the things that is kind of historically, uh, when Trump came into power, it didn't, it didn't start well. And it didn't go well from day one. Uh, he opposed the tra uh, transition office. He didn't know what it was. He actually claimed that it was set up to steal his money, which no one could comprehend. Anyhow, I actually worked for a while in the Office of Transition with Obama. But, um, but when Trump came in, these guys he brought in, they tossed out their briefing books. They have meetings to show you what to bring them up to speed, to show them what the agencies are up to, what Congress is being in, various projects, and their missions. Thing. He's getting on and all this. They said, we don't, they, they didn't want to have anything to do with that. They just didn't bother with it. Guy, this energy guy and some of these others, as yeah, it didn't start out well. Um, now another thing about, we talked about this earlier, OFA. Obama's still in Washington, talking about a secret government, but he has office, it's actually it's described as a tall brick building. Uh, it's actually a taxpayer funded office. Uh, he has more than 30,000 members in 250 offices across the country in this organization. And I've, I've uh, been in touch with them out of Hyde Park. Um, and they have things from time to time. But they have 30,000 or so. He's building a domestic force as well. And all this. Now the thing about the Federal Deep Space Force is that it has excellent communications tools. 
at its disposal. We even have a radio station, which I've spoken on many times. <laughs> but uh, this is not this is not just some little in, something we thought of yesterday. Um, now there's leaks to the media. These are intended clearly to inform dissent and disloyalty. And anytime you see there's an anonymous news store, news source for a story. You know. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. <clears throat> now it is a deep safe work. Um, the bureaucrats slow walk. They even block any legislation or legislative directives, executives' orders that they not, may not maybe feel like implementing. And given accountability measures, if they're right on, uh, this can take a long time. Things can happen, who knows what, but uh, it's not a new thing. Another thing that's amazing, uh, that as much as uh, Trump may be concerned about the deep state reporting on him to the media, is that in doing so, you're in fact protected, engaged in what I call a protected activity. A uh, whistleblower who's exposed as fraud, waste, or abuse cannot be disciplined or terminated. And believe you me, uh, they, any act of retaliation uh, will be investigated and the perpetrator. So there's even this thing about leaking to the media is in fact authorized. Another thing I see here in the right-wing media is to say, well, my goodness, sir, they, they, they go by the term, quote, it's quote, a continuation of operations or COG, continuation of government. Oh man, the government has, has plans to keep going. They're going to throw out the president or take over, or they're going to do this uh, uh, activity event and take over the United States and subvert all the laws. This is a rather boring routine thing. It's uh, it's probably a good idea. It's just to check that everybody has phone lines that's working. All employees can operate out of their home. They have duty stations, it's tested. It is not the big nefarious thing. It's a good idea even if you have a private company to engage in coop activities, continue, to continue your operations in the event of some natural disaster, fires, and things like that. It's standard operating procedures. Uh, one of the things about the deep safe that's, that we've worked and I've worked assiduously at this for many, many years is that uh, you have to be terminated. Actually, there's only two ways to get fired. That's conduct and performance. And performance takes a long time, and you have to be given an opportunity to improve. If they claim that you're not performing, it could take up to a year, and guys like me make it intensely difficult or impossible. <laughs> okay, now one of the things are, and you talk about your other organization, but I'm gonna tell you what the deep state does. And it does a whole lot of things here. Just look at this list here. These are the agencies that it's involved in, ranging from agriculture through to the, the independent agencies. Uh, one of the things that the state does is make certain the citizens aren't too thrilled about tampering with it very much because it might damage their entitlements. Uh, Social Security, Medicaid, SNAP, oh, you try to shut down the government. You get people very much concerned about that. And guess what? They take our side on the issue. All right, the other thing, I love this. Uh, the uh, deep state will, uh, will actually, they, they try to, I'll just leave this alone. They try to get youth organizations to do it. Another inherent function of the deep state is uh, the public safety an inherent function of government. I'm sorry, all you're talking about CIA and like this. And Andy's favorite, the Patriot Act. Um, actually, this is amazing, people don't know this. In order to, uh, uh, to get what is called a national security letter, you don't need the approval of the judge. Any federal employee can do it. There's certain authorities in which they can get phone and email communications and any activity on the net. So next time you want to look up refusefascism.org, you know. Another thing federal employees do 
and I've spoken on this several times, laws are passed, but they're very, very, very generic. They really do not say very much. The real issues for the application comes in those regulations that emanate from the law that are written for it, the regulations. I get a daily update on regulations for all agencies. But this is where the, the things are decided on. And these are done by federal employees in an office after the law is passed to write these things. Now, the 17 intelligent agencies are beat up all the time by the right-wing media. There are basically only three that actually get involved in any degree of surveillance here. They were formed after World War II to stop the commies under Truman. Now they've expanded their role allegedly to combat terrorism, which you, that's a good thing. You should say, thank us for doing a good job stopping the bad guys, right? Now one of the things they do in this process, is a lot of people don't know this, is we have data centers. We have one in Utah and one outside in Maryland. I love this. Their motto is, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. <laughs> All right, I will. We got only five minutes here. All right, my own organization and yeah, right. Andy, that's enough. Give me time now. Don't bug me, Andy. Don't bug me, Andy. Yeah, I know. The rules you leave, Charlie. Give time. Yeah, get it cut off. You, you were okay. rushing us out of here, and, you know. You know. No. Well, right. Don't change the format of the college. For Christ's sake, please, Andy. All right, let me finish. Good vote here, that's what I gave you. Another thing is, um, oh, I like this. Trump tried to move his own people in to serve as his eyes and ears at federal agencies. But <laughs> a list was obtained of these individuals. So anytime you saw a Trump guy, or a gal, you know. Oh, here, you want to talk about control of government? Uh, Trump didn't want us to have a pay increase. We got a vote 92 to 6, the United States Senate approved the pay raise, federal employees. Trump tried to issue three executive orders. He was taken to court, all three were thrown out. He tried to control the something. Federal impeachment, there's been about 60 judges. Not as, actually, the only thing that's kind of interesting about impeachment is, is that if you're guilty of it, you may never hold that office again. Uh, one thing you may not ever hear about, we were talking about, the feds are talking about getting Trump, is a thing called fitness for duty exam. And you could be required to go through a psychological testing. Believe me, this does happen if they think you're a little nuts, and then you're drummed out of the service. But that's what we're talking about here with Trump. The right wing thinks that they the focus only, and you got you, they think it's only the, something called the SES, the Senior Executive Service, which is certainly influential bureaucrats, a small club of very seasoned administrators, but it's not the totality of the government by any means. Uh, anyhow, I like this here, and this was just last week. Lindsey Graham wanted a special counsel to investigate the bureaucratic coup against Trump. You know, that's great, you know. Uh, good luck. Hey, there's a guy here you gotta watch out for. He may be acting with impunity in the government. That's what I always say. There, there's treasonous people working with impunity in the government. Now, Thrush Limbaugh claimed he decided, he discovered the term deep state, claiming they were Democrats in the administration. Uh, Q has talked about he's supposed to be a federal employee with security, a white paper, but I haven't heard much about him lately. Uh, just some articles you can look at FedBook, you'll find all these. Uh, that who are Trump's real opposition partner? Federal employees. Trump is not our president. Putin is. You know. <laughs> okay. And last of all, the conspiracy theorists, you're chasing the wrong place. The deep state likes that, though. Keep it up. I certainly applaud it. It drops the attention off us, and which we don't need, you know. But who is winning? Uh, Trump promised to drain the swamp and then launch the administration second to none in conflicts of interest, self-dealing, plea deals, and convictions. There you go. No article. Or, all right. All right. It's yours, Andy.
Speakers up. Hey, hey Charlie, you want to come up here too? Yeah. All right. Keep your answers brief. We're going to get your question. My question is about Well, say your question. Who's got questions? We know. Just say your question. First question over there. What does it mean in English? Shadow government, what does it mean? The federal government? Is that Charlie? Yeah. Shadow. 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 Uh, Shadow. Kind of just a, another term for um, the government in the background that is not the obvious one. Uh, you're, you're, the president gets on TV and he's supposed to be the government. Congress gets on TV and they're supposed to be the government. Shadow government is the government um, in the background. Uh, you know, CIA operatives don't get on TV. Uh, the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, practically never gets on TV. You have to kind of look look for them, you know, uh, because they're behind the scenes. That's the definition of oh, the, oh. that's the, another term. It's another term from the deep state. Okay. I I would also I agree with that, but um, I actually looked it up, and shadow government is Take, kind unwrap, of. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, shit. Unwrap oh. the uh, Velcro no, and hold order. the mic. Yes. <laughs> that's all right. It was so good. Yeah. That's 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 right. The shadow government is is what kind of like what Ted and I are talking about that Charlie says doesn't really kind of conspiracy theory. They the my Peter Dale Scott. There's kind of two definitions of the deep state. Peter Dale Scott says that his is more like Ted's and mine. More like the way Wikipedia defines shadow government, um, because it's, it's uh, people say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory, it doesn't even exist, it's, it's kind of a covered up secret group, and, um, but also uh, it's not more public, whereas if you look at Deep State on Wikipedia, some people describe it just more the public kind of view that Charlie has, but um, I think Charlie's definition right. of it is more um, just to add in there. It's kind of a okay. misinformation to All right. distract us from it. No, wait a minute. Let me answer yeah. this. Uh -huh. Peter Dale Scott is, is credited with coming up with the term deep state, I think around 1985. He's a. Here, Charlie. He's, oh. He, he's, a, he's credited with coming up with the term deep state. He gives interviews and, and the, on the YouTube all this stuff. Uh, the only thing is, he's not a political scientist. He's a literature guy. And his whole deep state is, if I'm, what I got was just like Kennedy conspiracy stuff, you know. He and he, it in his analysis. then he jumps, no, I, I'm serious, he okay. jumps like from, Kennedy to Iraq or something. I don't, that's what I mean. I couldn't figure that out. By the way, the, the conspiracy theory, why are there five year gaps between what the deep state allegedly does? The events. Okay. They're, they're deep state, uh, they're um, false flag shooting hosts practically um, every every month. Uh, those, are, those are deep state. Uh, those aren't acknowledged as, um, I mean, as official government actions, right? Uh, all these mass shooting hoaxes, uh, other uh, quote unquote attacks, these are classic false flags. Um, they're regular, they're regular crisis. Um, every single day, practically, uh, you have uh, uh, deep state airliners and, and other planes, military planes, uh, poisoning us right. with, um, with uh, chemtrails, okay, chemicals, okay? Anybody who doesn't know this should investigate. There, there's no question about this whatsoever. Um, and that's not um, that's not an official government policy. That's in a, that's practically an everyday thing. And also, the CIA uh, came up with a policy of of calling things conspiracy theories. They do them, but they say from our policy is call it a conspiracy theory because it gives them plausible deniability. It keeps it covered up and covert operations. So, but their main reason for doing it is, uh, you know to start a war. You know, that's a big false flag, like 9-11, war on terror, Pearl Harbor, World War II. 
you know, um, Gulf of Tonkin, Vietnam, right? Um, let, let, me, let me just add to what I just mm -hmm. said. Um, the really big events like 9-11, uh, the JFK assassination, the deep state doesn't have to do these every, yeah, no. every, day, every day or every year. Okay? Yeah. These set the course That's for right. the long term. We are under the shadow of 9-11 for the past, uh, what, 17 years now. Uh, they don't have to do a 9-11 um, every year to keep us on the same course. Now, if you, get a pre yeah. if you were to get a, a real uh, uh, American president who actually represented the people and started changed, wanting to change that course like another JFK, then you would get another deep state uh, assassination. Uh, and that could be, you know, Everyone's that's only when that. it's necessary. They don't have to do such drastic things uh, every single, you know, that often. Okay. The deep state timeline, according to the theorists, <laughs> jumps like from Kennedy to the, another Kennedy assassination. Thank you. It's like five years, it disappears. I said, where does it go? Why? The other one I'm proposing here, our motto is we work for America every day. It doesn't disappear. There's continuity. But there are specific events. You admittedly, you've given programs on them. Another question? I, I, I have to say that I think Charlie's theory, there is a counterintelligence. The CIA, call them plausible deniability. There's a disper active disinformation by agents like the FBI or the um, union of the FBI to subvert us. They treat us like we're communists, right? And um, anybody or a whistleblower is not a, really not allowed that. I mean, if you think about it, we, it doesn't break through the media, right? I mean, if the definition of a whistleblower is just somebody that doesn't lose his job, but who's already got a job, that, to me, we've got to broaden whistleblower power to expose Okay. One, 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 one real, All right. one last thing. The Federal Reserve works every single day to enrich the rich. Yeah. Question back. All right. Did I, did I, I heard you mention the Gulf of Tonkin as a false flag incident. But I also heard you mention World War II. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, your, your position is that Pearl Harbor was a false flag? I, I think there's some evidence that that could have been stopped. They knew it was coming, you know. Um, World War II can't be stopped. So let, well, war, no, but it was. OK, that's a different thing. I, I, different. Think there, I think it does fit the pattern. What do you think? Um, yes, there's, there's a whole lot of evidence um, that uh, FDR and some of the inner uh, circle people uh, knew about um, um, Japan's propensity to get into the war, but they had to act. They had to uh, create a, an, an incident, okay, um, and, or go Japan into an incident. Um, they the, had all the, 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 boats the, there. the Pearl Harbor fleet. Was, yeah. should, I mean, excuse me, the U.S. fleet should never have even been in Hawaii. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy they wanted to keep it, uh, like on the East Coast, was fired. There were, there's a whole lot of evidence that this oh, was no, set up to get the to get the uh, um, uh, the U.S. into World War II. Because that's a very profitable. War is extremely profitable for the bankers. So, uh, Question over here. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, Hitler, Nazis, uh, Third Reich. Uh, you, in, in relation to the current administration, the current uh, government, I don't see that. I don't see Nazis. I, you, you got Hitler on your mind, it seems. Like. I, well, you don't see them, but I, I think you don't see them. It takes a while. It's almost seeing the Marxist perspective or, uh, um, I mean, it is kind of hard to see because the media doesn't cover it. They make it like we're the happy, you know, kingdom on the hill. But once you see it, um, there, it just, um, you know, you have to kind of be open-minded to seeing that there is a dynamic where the fascists are suppressing the communists. So I think you understand it if you've been suppressed as a, liberal or a communist or a democrat or a woman or a black or a minority or some somebody who has your house taken by this woman who took my stepfather and our our family's fortune and just as if we were the jews in germany and they said take the house you know the jews are shipped off somewhere else so if, if a state crime against you happens it's not a theory it's happening and the, you know, we, there's people in Chicago who are in prison, tortured by guys of the state. We're, you know, tortured them, put, put electrodes to their balls and ears, just like they were trained to do in Vietnam, in Guantanamo. So I'm talking about a military state. There was a coup d'etat, basically, and it's not just Trump, it's not just Bush. 
not just Cheney, it's a whole evil deep state that, you know, is best described as Ted and by these trilateral, the anti-communist league. You know, it's, it, they pay to suppress and kill and torture whistleblowers and good people all over the world, mostly communists. That was the war on communism, right? Let's just, you know, kill the people, genocide them, burn them. Look at any movies. There's a lot of, you know, millions of people tortured by Iran and Iraq and everywhere. Yeah, it seems like the deep state And we're doing it. Against the right wing, I mean, the Trump administration. The, the That's Charlie's wing. idea. That's disinformation. It's no, the right no, no, wing no. on the left wing. It always has yeah, been. Okay, well, that's your point. Sit. You had a question? Yeah, um, well, it's not exactly a question. But if you look at Germany, Question. And how Hitler got funded, the ones that funded them were the Krupps, the Thysons, IG Farben, that made the chemicals to kill people. And the Bush family? The, 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 the Yunkers, the big land of the states, none of them Ford. were brought to justice after the war. Mm -hmm. Not one of them mm -hmm. was brought to justice. Correct. And mm -hmm. the same people that that funded Hitler are still in power. I have a Their question. Families. Have a question. Mm -hmm. World War Thank II you. ended. It did it not? Yeah. World War II ended. No, no, no it didn't. It did not end? No. Okay. Uh, so forget it. Not, not the way we say we it did in the well, public media. Question in the back there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the back. Well, my question is for Charlie. On Yo, a practical yeah. matter, uh, did I hear you say that uh, just ordinary government employees could uh, search my internet uh, history and in my uh, phone call history uh, without a warrant? Uh, the, is this on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the point I was making is it doesn't require any judicial, uh, uh, it, all it takes is administrative approval, whether or not it would be in, within the uh, normal duties of any employee, that's not really the case. But it would not require any, any strenuous activity, actually basically approval. But uh, why hasn't somebody you know. found out uh, who Donald Trump Jr. was calling about that meeting with the Russians? Well, there's significant. And leaked it. We leaked, mm -hmm. I don't know the details, I don't recollect. But, That's an, uh, a rhetorical question, we didn't uh, expect Oh, you No, uh, the only point I was trying to make is a lot of people think that um, these, see, now there's even limitations. If you want to go a little bit further, they're not really monitoring calls. So surveillance is maybe a little bit topic, a little bit more beyond it, but actually it's called an administrative action to, they don't really, that was part of the intention uh, that it was encumbering uh, law enforcement people uh, from this. Now, and for the larger, how can I say this? So for the deeper surveillance, the approval process gets more complicated. Can, can let's I just violate in the, the Fourth Amendment? Yeah. That'll solve the problem. What? Uh, to, to, to make it easier for law enforcement, let's just violate the Fourth Amendment. Uh, um, to yeah. do what? No, to violate the Fourth Amendment. Well, do you want a terrorist? Well, let's, you know, to, to well, hold on. Up, uh, let's forget about. Let's throw out the Fourth Amendment. Can know? I say? Um, yeah, you want you want to die? Yeah. Actually, it is, you know, if you looked at Snowden, the NSA, if you've been monitoring this, um, you know, the Patriot Act pretty much, like you said, uh, threw out our privacy right. rights, um, you know, and as Snowden showed, there's people, the movie, you know, they go in and set up this banker and, you know, it, it's, you've seen other movies, they're just like these employees that are uh, monitoring my internet all the time probably um, if you're on the list. A lot like COINTELPRO, I've got a, I mean, a whole bunch of documents that show, you know, Hoover's writing a propaganda political campaign to um, discredit left-wing radical uh, students okay. for democratic society, shoot up, you know, Chapman um, or Fred Hampton and uh, I just learned today that I heard that um, we're starting to question these things. They're coming up. That um, Hanrahan, who was the one who did it, was the district attorney. And I, you asked about a solution. I, the prosecutors, there's like no oversight. They don't. They get to, you know, do whatever they want. So a lot of 
evil corruption is done in the name of the prosecutor. So we should okay. keep the camera on them and vote for them and uh, try to. I'm demanding CPAC, Civilian Police Accountability okay. Council, oversight over the, the FOP wants no records, no no cameras, no sound, no justice. That the, it could be a police day. You got a question here? Yes, yeah, for Ted. You mentioned ALEC, the state legislation organization, at a negative point. What was negative? What's bad about that? Because when you get more and more people involved in decision making around the whole country, isn't that a good thing? I mean, is that bad? We're not talking about uh, more and more people. We're talking about a handful of uh, very large corporations. That's not the people. No, you're talking about the state legislatures around the country. Right. Is that Alec? Is that Alec? Yeah, Alec. Al Alec is an organization that uh, gets uh, legislators and corporations in the same room, apart from the people. We're not talking about any large number of people. We're talking about, the, I mean, this is a conference somewhere in, you know, a resort yeah. in Arizona. Does it doesn't involve all the legislatures? Uh, the it, yeah, but that, okay, but that's still um, a relative small number of people. Uh, I thought you were trying to get at, at the notion that this is somehow democratic. No, it's not. We're talking about the corporations and, and, a, and a, a relatively small number of legislators. If you, all the legislators of the state legislatures of, the, of this country could fit in a large uh, conference room. What and also, let me answer that. Um, I know ALEC is kind of a spin-off of Manhattan Institute and all these groups, the trilateral, and they, they come, American Legislative Exchange Committee, they will give, they break it down to the Republican Governors Association, and they'll give them the policy, and they say, we want privatized schools. Push this through, and they don't even bother to change the names. I mean, this, this is not grassroots policy. This is... They call it AstroTurf. You know, let's put in privatize down, everything. Privatize it, privatize it. And it's bad. Uh -huh. Alec produces like cookie cutter legislation, pieces of legislation. They, they might produce the same bill to roll back civil rights and one thing, and no, those bills go out to all the Republican governments. And so they state all by over, state. All over the country. And so the, it's not these individual states that are making up these bills. It's the corporation working through Alex, big corporations, yeah. that produces legislation. Right. And it's just given to the governor and the, the Republican vote, uh, right. people in those states, and they just vote it in without even producing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quick question. It puts in what privatized be, jails. Uh, what would be, um, Ted, what would be, uh, you, you, said, you know, this isn't a democracy. It doesn't work as a democracy. It's not a democracy. What would be a democracy in your opinion? Well, I've, that I've uh, said this many times very broadly without getting into a ton of detail. Uh, yeah, you could have community assemblies in, in, all, in all communities throughout the country, and uh, those people, those, that would be all the people, of the, uh, all the citizens, they would uh, be the legislative part of the government, and they would make the laws. And then the executive could be random sample councils, councils at each level, at the community level, the uh, city level, uh, uh, regional, state, and then the national okay. level. Th this would be councils of like um, a few hundred people, uh, but chosen random, so that it wouldn't be special, select, rich people, or tools of, of rich people. It would be ordinary people just like you all, okay? Uh, that, that would be the executive. Uh, but the, the legislature, the legislature, the uh, sovereign power would be ordinary people in community assemblies throughout the country. And this is based on, by the way, on the Athenian system. If you just look at any, uh, you know, reference at uh, the uh, system of Athens, the direct democracy of Athens, that's what that idea is based on. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, question? Yeah, I got a question for our pet. Well, no, I, I've been in the United Nations Association for years, and they get together and they discuss foreign affairs, and there's other groups, Council of Foreign Relations in Chicago, and now you say these other groups are, are not allowed, or, I mean, people with careers in, in State Department type things, regardless of their wealth or their background, they're going to be in associations, and discuss foreign affairs. What makes it bad? I'd like to answer that. Are they that. prohibited from discussing it? No. Can I answer that? I, what we need is transparency. Um, you know, they, like Jefferson said, it'd be better to have a, a free newspapers and than government. But that, um, you know, that some get to hide under the cloak of secrecy. Uh, they get to be a non covert and I mean, if we could audit the Federal Reserve, we'd clean it up. If we could have audited um, the, the Supreme Court, we don't get to have cameras in there. Um, you know, any, if, 
if we could have the records of the police department, how many people they shoot and kill and torture, then we could we could regulate it. So I think this war on, we need regulation. Just restore right regulation and keep scientifically, you know, enhancing the good and, um, and you know, just banning the bad, you know, the evil. Got a question uh, can I, can I, uh, and, and can I further answer uh, 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 your question? Your um, idea, I think, is uh, of interest groups, okay? There are a whole lot of interest groups, and yeah. why not everybody participate, and isn't that all nice That's and fun? good. Okay, but um, the deep state is not, is not simply interest groups. It's special, very powerful uh, groups of uh, basically funded by very rich people, okay? Like the, the CFR, the Council on Foreign Relations, is not your everyday, um, you know, a civic group, um, your uh, a school board, okay? These are uh, extremely powerful people. They were, it was funded, founded by the Morgans, the most powerful uh, family, the richest family in the United States uh, around the turn of the century. And then the Rockefellers, okay? That, those are the people behind the CFR. Okay. And so they have a, a, an extreme amount of clout. They're not your average interest group. You have this idealized version, idea, of um, interest groups, um, uh, but that's not the way this government works. What, once you realize that they funded the dirty wars, uh, you know, um, the torture, the Vietnam, the slaughter, and lied about it constantly, um, you know, the guy, I just recently, the guy, Victor Mara, was a great musician, and they just in Chile under Kissinger, the CIA, this is known, funded Pinochet's coup d'etat of Allende because he was communist, right, socialist. Every socialist experiment that could have been working was toppled by, you know, sticking the Chicago boys, give it a good PR campaign. But when you realize the truth is it of what you hear from the people that they smashed his hand so that he couldn't sing, you know, um, these true stories are the legends. It's Bertha Catheris that they murder. I mean, this is mafia state stuff is what we are, and the CIA is organized crime, uh, Phoenix program, and it's been proven. And the more you know, the more you realize you don't want them as, you know, running our government, right? None of you have really gotten at what the real core issue is. Uh, the battle is not physical, it's spiritual. Right. The Masons, uh, uh, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian religion, the owl statue in the Bohemian world, right. uh, all the satanic elements. Uh, none of you have said anything about yeah, these. I've, I've got my favorite, second favorite writer, David Livingstone, as the book. Uh, black soldiers, white um, terror, or the other way around, I, but about fascism, and he, he traces the cult. It all goes to the cult, the satanic cult that was behind Hitler, the mafia, um, you know, the propaganda due. I mean, it's all satanic, and they deliberately, you know, it's evolved from it, um, different forms of it. Okay. Uh, Just to, for, to further answer your question, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and that's one aspect of some of these deep, uh, deep state groups like Skull and Bones. They're, they're supposed to have these uh, crazy, uh, uh, sick rituals. Um, people are looking more and more into pedophilia, which is, and also literally killing that. children, okay, uh, in, in rituals. Um, and that might very well all be going on, uh, and which is perfectly good to study. Uh, personally, okay, I study, and they blame I study, it on the, I study the governmental aspects, the, the uh, uh, political structure aspects. So that's a perfectly, uh, uh, Good route to investigate. I, I'm just, I just personally don't uh, look that much into that particular thing, but that's perfectly fine. Hey, who else has, hasn't had a question here tonight? Right there. Uh, I'd like to ask each speaker to briefly comment on this. What, if anything, what portion, if any, has racism to do with the deep state? Each one, I'd like to have a <laughs> brief statement. I, I was, saw somewhere, what's the difference between racism and fascism? And I think, I think there's a lot of similarities because it's the state group violation of the rights of groups, you know, based on superiority and this cultish sense of superiority. And they often have to have an, an other. So it's white against, you know, or the elite against the other. Thank it's you.
Um, well, you know, everybody points out that our original rulers, uh, the, the founding fathers, were um, all white and they were all slave owners. So racism it goes deep into in, in our history. But I think that nowadays, uh, race is used more, as I think you just said, more like to divide and conquer than, than, than much else. They play up all kinds of racist incidents, uh, uh, black versus white, uh, whereas, I mean, the vast majority of people, okay, I, I think, and it's probably demonstrable, are not particularly racist, if yeah. you ask me. Uh, so, <laughs> race is nowadays used more as a divide and conquer strategy, and it, of course, it's, it, uh, people um, kind of uh, uh, buy into it because it's so obvious that there is racism, uh, and, and good-hearted people want to stamp out racism, uh, but the way they do it, uh, they, you know, they, they, they have all these false flags, uh, where this, this, this white supremacist is supposed to have killed all these black people. You know, if you're lying, if you're freaking lying about these kinds of things, then you, that's, that's nefarious. You, you can't base uh, a, a strategy on, on racism, but then use false uh, uh, flag okay. events and such. Uh-huh. Uh, two parts. The, in administration of civil service, every agency or unit of it has EEO, Equal Employment Opportunity, full-time officers who represent employees in the event of any complaint. Also, if the complaint is sustained, there's a monetary award in enforcement, which is very unusual. You don't have to enforcement very often has some sort of penalty but a monetary punishment for violations. So that takes care of it. Now the other thing about the only thing that I can say that there's racism is out of the legislative branch regarding voting issues. There's oh, claims yeah. of that. But that's not certainly not the deep hey. state or they suspended anything voting else, rights. So I don't. Policies. That's that's that is southern racism. southern legislator. Question right. in the uh, back. Let me, can I just add one thing, Andy? Real quick, real quick. Well, real quick, real quick. Uh, white people are oppressed in this country. Uh, pretty much, uh, maybe not as much as black people. Okay, but uh, white people are oppressed too. All right, yeah. uh, but. They, this doesn't want to, the, the, the people who rule this country want to make it seem like, uh, you know, everything's uh, hunky-dory for white people. That's ridiculous. Okay. Question in the back? Yeah, yeah, um, I think I've asked That's this to, uh, Ted before, but to, to all three of you, what, ex what extent does the deep state go towards uh, covering up and uh, investigating uh, uh, UFOs? <laughs> they know all about it. I don't know anything about that, actually. Uh, you want to? Uh, the UFO situation is one of the uh, top secret things that's suppressed uh, all through this country, but around the world people are taking pictures of the landings. Uh, the CIA was tracking the other four civilizations in 1988 before the Berlin Wall came down. During the Cold War, the CIA had a program to track the other four civilizations that are interacting with us. Down the human race, there's five of us out here, and five races that they know of, okay. and a bunch of others of speculation. See? That's where it is so far, but the press in the United States doesn't talk about it. I, Trump's I, if I do have an opinion, it's, I, I did hear, you know, Pence pushed through a position that we, they've now legalized, you know, um, warfare from the skies, from space, and uh, I, I would surmise that there's a, um, a lot of that going on, you know. Um, um, UFOs are as real as the airplanes that you see flying around, okay? It's yeah. just that uh, we don't see them all the time and not everybody sees them. Um, but if you look into the literature of UFOs, uh, there's just no question about it. We've been visited, there are uh, uh, abductions and all kinds of things. Um, but then uh, the U.S. government is involved with aliens, okay? It gets messy. Um, but there's no question that this is a very important issue that in a rational society would be discussed rationally and the evidence would be brought forth and people could see it for themselves. Uh, you can study them, study uh, uh, the evidence. There are a whole lot of books. I've read a whole lot of books, uh, watched a whole lot of videos, etc. So the evidence is there, but the media, as Andy just said, uh, wants to keep that you know, 10 feet under. Call it conspiracy theory. You can also look at, you they can keep it covered up. Let's get through. Oh. Uh, you can see the models. Uh, want to go to rebuttal, Charles? Yeah. Uh, you know.
I got one more question after this. He's got a question too, back here. In the back. What's your question? You have a question. Question. You can see midnight. You can see UFOs in the skies with midnight vision goggles. That's great. I've never heard of that. Go outside right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got one more. Twenty-five hundred bucks. Goggles. How about on eBay? That's interesting. Tim, you got a question? Yeah, I'd like to know why you guys are conspiring against our rebutters with the excessive amount of time we're okay. taking on All questions. Right. Okay. That's a conspiracy. <laughs> I deny it. And it's, I deny it. Everything. <laughs> All right, very good. All right. We're going to go three minutes. We're skipping final statements from the speakers so we can get a chance to do rebuttals. How many people want to do a rebuttal? Huh? Hold your hands up. Set, two, only four rebuttals tonight? There's one here. More. One here, two, three, four. There'll be six, more. Six, three, three minutes apiece. Now we'll go with you. About three minutes apiece. Three minutes or less. We're going to try to keep a strict clock. Actually, when you look at the word deep state, I know. it's the same thing as a ruling class. And the ruling class has been with us since the beginning of slavery in ancient Greece and in ancient Rome. The only thing about that, they weren't industrialists and they weren't bankers. They were what you would call the patrician class. They owned the large estates, what they called the latifundas, and they owned the mines where the slaves worked. And the ruling class were the ones who were exploiting the slaves. In order to keep them down, they had what they called the state. The state is a form of coercion like the army, the police, the jails, the judges, in order to keep the slaves from revolting. That was called the state. Now in feudalism, you had the uh, lords of the manor and the kings. And they also owned these large uh, states and they, and they had what they called slurfs, serfs, which was a form of slavery. And the serfs worked the land and done other work, and they got very little for it, and all the, all the profits, almost all the profits went to the uh, aristocracy, aristocracy or the patrician class. So they needed the state in order to keep them from revolting. Now in capitalism, you have two basic classes. You have the people that work for a living and the people that make profit and own the factories, the farms, and the banks that exploit the working class and they make huge profits. And we also have a state in order to keep them down. But it's more than that. We also have a very vast propaganda machine in the form of new t newspapers, <laughs> magazines, the radio, television, that mostly it doesn't inform at all. It just gives them a few facts, but it keeps away the idea that they're still slaves because under capitalism, okay. labor is exploited for profit. 30 seconds. So when they make profit, that the people that have the most as far as investments are concerned, it's three minutes. like I, the banks, like the rock, what they call it was a minute. the rotten smellers, the Morgans, and other uh, capitalists, and also the industrialists that have merged with the banks, and they have and they have what they call financialization, and they're the ones that control the United States. Like I said, the Morgans, the Rockefellers. Uh, the Bezos and the Gates and people like that really run the United States and they have all these different things like people brought out like Alex 
and all kinds of um, institutions, but they give the impression that we have democracy because we could go every two to four years to vote. Well, you know, we, we vote for a representative of capitalism. And we don't, we don't vote for a representative of the people that work for a living. And if you look at the economy right now, what's 1% of 1% own almost the total economy. And the rest of us are going down, down, down. And it's a form of slavery, that's all it is. But okay. they tried to give the impression that it's democracy. But it's just another form of slavery, like feudalism and outright slavery. All right. I agree with some of what has been said, but some of the big issues in life, civil rights legislation, that's here. Take a look at who's running in these current elections. Take a look, take a look at who's running in, who's, who's playing in sports now. It's a different world than it was in 1947. It's a different world. <coughs> the Vietnam War ended. I don't care about someone, why do they want to make more money. It ended. The war ended. Here's the book. The Great Transition by Lister Brown. Came out in 2015. If you want to get the, the basic idea of what's going to be going on over the next few years, this is it. Thank you. From fuel, from oil to, to basically uh, solar and wind. It's and going to happen, regardless of what you say. Nuclear is out. Nuclear is not going to. Okay, I will read you. God damn it, I will read you something here. Okay. Yeah, you. you I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Nuclear power, power in decline. So, oh, let me go to nuclear. No. Nuclear power once lauded as the energy source that would be too cheap to monitor. Becoming too metered. Okay, whatever. Too costly. How it's becoming too costly to use. For the world as a whole, nuclear power plant generation peaked in 2006. It dropped by more than 10%. By 2013, the United States, the country with the most nuclear reactors, nuclear generation peaked in 2010 and then dropped nearly 3% by 2014. Second place, France. Nuclear power output dropped 7% since peaking in 2005. This is what's going on. I know. If you want a picture of what's going on, this is the book to read. Read it. You, you can read see it. it. You can get this book online. You can read it online. Yeah. It's it's available online. Just look. You can read the whole thing. It's a good yeah. thing, right? Yeah. That's good. List the book All again. Right. Thank Tell you. All right. All right. All right. Got the oil wars. Yeah. The, the Great Transition by Lester yeah. Brown. All Thank right. You. Thanks. Read it. Give me. Oh, I will. Give a talk on it. <laughs> no, you read it. I'll I'll be more than happy to read it and explain why he's wrong. Oh. Okay, maybe we ought to have a talk about you. That's, that's no problem. We should get a debate going. Get a debate? That would be a good one, I'm sure. Okay, ready? Okay. I'm sorry, my yeah. friend. Okay, okay. give me ahead. back my seven. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking the Senate here. Okay, so um, I'm going to use my time as best I can here. I have just a ton of notes on this napkin. It's just incredible. Um, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that uh, we have speakers that are um, giving us uh, information that we can go and find out how much it's, if it's true or not. Uh, you know, and uh, give us okay. a lot of uh, <laughs> food for fodder for a long time. Um, Ellen, you underestimate uh, how valuable you are as an activist. You're you're doing such a great job. At, uh, refuse fascism. We'll take you back as, in a larger role any time that you can. And uh, it's just tremendous what you've done uh, on behalf of victims of, uh, of police violence. And, and what a great thing that we can at least celebrate that this city did not do something horrible like other cities have done and, and just let a cop go free after such an obvious uh, infraction. Uh, and at least they, they gave him murder too. Uh, so 
Uh, that said, um, yeah, um, I a uh, number of times have said that I subscribe to the idea that there is some kind of a deep state. Uh, I don't know how much of it is UFO related. I think I think you have a whole bunch of different factions as part of this uh, deep state, and uh, I don't know that anyone's gotten to the bottom of it. But the thing is that it's uh, it's so it's so deep. <laughs> but uh, um, we can uh, all. Uh, Whoops, you know what? This is, I thought it was, oh, gee. Take it off. Oh, wow. you, know oh, you can hold it. I'll just, just hold, just hold it. it. Yeah. I got confused by the, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, you can see that I'm not used to this so much. <laughs> um, but um, we really, um, um, we really have to admit that um, uh, we don't know everything. Um, everyone's trying to find out what they can. And um, what we do know, however, is that we're faced, uh, and as Ellen pointed out, I mean, uh, our, our, you know, whether you call them Nazis or fascists, whoever they are, um, we have a problem where they're actually in the, um, you know, the uh, observable government or whatever uh, Ted called it, and the, uh, it's mostly the Republicans that are the, the real problem to uh, subverting our democracy now. So, uh, or our republic. Um, as Jimmy Carter pointed out, it really isn't a democracy anymore. So, it's, so Ted, you're right. It's, it's officially an oligarchy, an oligarchy um, which uh, I suspected for a long time. But um, um, the, the main thing is um, this election and, uh, and uh, uh, resisting in whatever way you can. And of course, we're just private citizens in this room. But uh, uh, the Republicans are the problem, as the Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh thing has pointed out. Uh, they will stop at nothing to just uh, subvert the rule of law by putting someone who is, you know, a complete uh, fascist on the Supreme Court. It's going to take away a ton of liberties that women have now and, and a ton of uh, uh, oh, yeah. liberties that uh, unions uh, and uh, workers have. Um, and it's just going to be very bad. So resist, resist, resist as much as you can. And I'll go on refusefascism.org even if Charlie is uh, checking all my internet. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody click on this recording. Thank you very much. Click on. You can read So uh, I think that um, I liked uh, Charlie's definition uh, of the deep state the best, where uh, there are governmental uh, employees who are not really, to some degree, not in control of the elected officials. I think it's very dangerous to start um, uh, talking about uh, non-government agencies or individuals who are not, uh, and, and claim that they are running the government uh, without really providing any kind of specific evidence. Yeah. It, it's going to create a tremendous amount of distrust and fear um, so uh, there certainly might be people in government, but uh, or might be people outside of government who have a huge amount of influence, but to label them part of the government, I think, is uh, going to just make the discussion more complicated. Uh, I am not uh, an anti-conspiracy guy. If you look at the statutes, uh, state and federal, you'll see uh, that there are actually laws against conspiring to commit crimes. So the the, the government actually can charge you with conspiracy. So uh, uh, there are also examples of, uh, of conspiracies that I think are a matter of record and agreed upon by most historians. Um, uh, the Mexican-American War was started with the false flag incident, and um, that gave us uh, uh, southwestern United States. Um, um, Spanish-American War was uh, started uh, under uh, false pretenses. Uh, the invasion of Cuba by alleged uh, Cuban patriots was really funded by the CIA. I think that's established fact and in most history books. Uh, and that is not an insignificant act that led to Castro uh, asking for Soviet military support, which led to military weapons, tactical military weapons on Cuba. So that uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, they literally were nuclear, tactical nuclear weapons during that military confrontation, and we were a hair's breadth within uh, nuclear Armageddon. Um, there are conspiracies. 
I, I, I don't doubt that, but, uh, but to just sit here and just kind of throw stuff out, which are theories without any kind of fact, uh, whether it be uh, chemtrails or, uh, or the, the, uh, the government behind 9-11 or, or that, uh, or that uh, global warming is a hoax without having any kind of substantial um, support for this. It, it, it really is a threat to uh, a, a common sense and a, a productive public discourse about important political, uh, important political uh, issues in this country. And it's a distraction. And in a lot of ways, I think it's a deliberate distraction by some of the, the players uh, who want to distract you from important issues. It's to talk about this other stuff that's more emotional based and is really lacking in fact. So I would plead with people to try to set up priorities and to not be so upset emotionally on issues where there's not a lot of substance. Okay. Uh, information yeah. support. Okay. Thank you. Max said I won. Max said I won. <laughs> Uh, you do need the same set of facts. Right there, you can see it on the screen. Okay. I'll try to be coherent. Not like some of our speakers. We'll, we'll remain angry. Uh, Sid was right about capitalism. Capitalism is, is the engine that's running the economy. And uh, the deep state is over here, capitalism is here, and over here is, is the liberals, the unions, the people who are thinking that the deep state is wrong. So uh, Chris Hedges wrote a book called The End of the Liberal Class, which basically says the unions were, are being destroyed, they were destroyed in the 40s, 50s. Uh, manufacturing left the country. Unions ended up uh, weak or not existent. Um, and capitalism is, is, has gone crazy, basically, in America. And uh, that's not good. When, uh, Subsidized capitalism. What? Subsidized. Like the banks are subsidized. You know, subsidized. Out. What about the, the schools that are being taken over by corporations? And uh, desubsidized. No, this is not deep. This is right here. This is right here in front of us. Yeah. And you you talk about deep state. What? Like Charlie says, there are government employees that stay with the government. But so what? There's still the liberal class that's being destroyed. People, I mean, the communists, the socialists, wobblies. The Who's wobblies were destroyed. Who? Half of them went to Russia. Half of them went to jail. The others were killed. Yeah, by fascists. Right? No, not fascists. It was the capitalists. Oh, capitalists. People who wanted. Same they're thing. not fascists. A capitalist takeover of government. Oh, I got the money. That's what I mean. Okay. People with the money. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go next. Yeah. They were, but they are going to down, but they always have after 1917. Whether you believe in conspiracy or not, I think most of you tonight are dead wrong. Capitalism has been the greatest economic growth and engine of prosperity that the mankind has ever made. Bullshit. Even Adam Smith, would, uh, who had a compatriot for the poor, came up with the with the system of price controls, which was done by signals for people around the area. And we've seen a steady growth in our industrial civilization over time. Now, how are we gonna power it in the future? You know, a lot of people think that wind and solar are gonna take over and magically take away our oil. Do you know how much power wind and solar are contributing right now? Maybe less than one-tenth of one percent. Nuclear power. Check out Germany. Germany has got the highest electric rates now in Europe. They are burning more coal than they've ever had because of their shutdown of their plants. 
No, I do know of the decline of the present day light water reactors and they're and they going off of nuclear power. What's that going to be replaced with? Natural gas and coal. And if you want to burn up the planet, that's the fastest way to do it because people want electric power. Developing countries want electric power. Richard Martin, in a book called Superfuel, talks about the design of something called the molten salt reactor, which their small, modular, operated atmospheric pressure can't melt down, and it's a wonderful way oh, of doing it. burn the radium down, in this yeah. stuff. And we did it for about 2,700 hours in the That's 60s under, under a um, under the Department of Energy from Richard Weinberg in his study uh, under the directorship of uh, it's Richard Weinberg in the thing. Now I'm going to be very brief because I only got three minutes, but he does present a solution to global warming. He does present a solution to getting our country on prosperity parity. That's all theory. None it's not exists. theory, Charlie. It's, it's mythology. Fact. No, you're you're operating in a mythical bubble, Charlie, because I've studied this. One more thing. I've studied this. I've been to these Thorium Energy Alliance conferences. I've talked to these physicists. I've talked to these guys who know what they're doing. I've read their papers. I've also read papers on the other side. And a lot of this wind and solar stuff, although it has a place and it is going to provide a significant contribution to our energy mix, you're going to need high power, lots of energy to run our cities, our cars. If you want to see deindustrialization, fine, go to wind and solar. If you want to see a society in decline, fine, go off and take off your nuclear power because even though the light water reactors are not the best way to do it, within the 30 year period that they were operating, they do contribute still about a fourth of our electric needs. We went through all this in, um, in a, few a few months ago on this stuff. Now, I'm done. Thank you. Let's get on with our next speaker. I think it's time for closing remarks. That's uh, last rebuttal. Uh, anybody else? Uh, okay, I'll just... You want to make a rebuttal? Well, anyway, we're running late. We'll have our speakers. 10,000. Um, are you going to, you go, Andy? I'm, I'm just going to uh, give a quick one minute. All right, Andy. Are we, we're, we're clear. We'll give you a, about a minute or so. And yeah. Um, go ahead. Three minutes. The database on the drop in price of solar and wind power is enormous. And we have, people are divided. That's why I've been calling the Catholic Church Syndrome. There's a psychological barrier. Unless you step through the barrier and look at the evidence, you stay on this side of the barrier with the old, traditional, ingrained thoughts. Uh, there's been a hundred books published on the uneconomic characteristics of any kind of nuclear power plant anywhere on the planet. Where Number one, solar energy comes in, 10,000 times more light falls on the planet every day than what the human race uses. All we got to do is collect one ten thousandth of it with solar and wind machines. You don't have to talk about wave power or geothermal. From oh, we're bathed in energy that has no pollution and radioactive waste like nuclear power. The idea that thorium wouldn't have a radioactive waste stream like the others is uh, believing in the tooth fairy at Santa Claus. And you're dead wrong. And we have to help Tim step through the psychological barrier, Tim and everybody else that promotes a dead technology. It's over for nuclear power and nobody is going to back it. The only people that will back it are the people that can get our senators to vote public money as welfare for the construction. No private companies anywhere in the world are going to develop a new generation of nuclear <laughs> power plants. It's just not happening and even if they get them built, they can't compete with a cheap solar. Solar has dropped 95% in price in the last that. 20 years. People don't realize that I know. and they don't crunch the numbers. So I hope to give a talk on this uh, sometime in the future. On uh, the, you know, We're teaching 7th right. graders the future law into solar and wind power. No, There's don't. just no debate on that at all. Yes, and there is. You have to step through the barrier. Sky. So uh, <laughs> yeah, at any rate, uh, we could have a debate maybe. Anyway, I would. Uh, if our does any one of our speakers want to give a one minute uh, summary? Uh, we're, we're out of time tonight, basically. Uh, Why are we out of time? I wanted to give a rebuttal. I wanted to give a rebuttal. I raised my hand for the rebuttal. Okay. 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 okay, give me a rebuttal. Give a rebuttal, and then uh, 
when, once she gets through with the rebuttal, uh, we'll finish up because they want to start cleaning at quarter to nine here. Yeah, okay, hi. Okay. We got about um, eight minutes left. Okay, yeah. I'm the other Ellen um, here. Um, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, first of all, today is, I'd say, a rather sad day for our country. Um, Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed, you know, being confirmed for the Supreme Court. Um, <laughs> And I think this, this is basically the end of, of Roe versus Wade until another liberal um, justice gets, gets in charge. Now, I, I was thinking about, about the issue of, of abortions. Um, I was looking at statistics according to NPR. Um, in 2014, it was about 926,000. Um, there were about 926,000 abortions in the United States. Um, it, the amount has probably decreased since then, but I'm not really sure. Um, and I'm thinking with the overturn of Roe versus Wade, which I think is inevitable at this point, there are two types of women which will particularly be affected. Uh, one will be poor women, women who like, say, live in Texas, who can't travel, maybe don't have the money to travel all the way to a place like Illinois or some other place, place where abortion will be legal. Um, and um, minors, minors, because they I know they've created laws where you can't transport a minor over state lines in order to get an abortion. I mean, maybe somebody, maybe they'll have a supportive family member who will give them money for a bus ticket or something. So, I mean, we're talking about, um, now, I, I very much support um, adoption. So, um, if, if people want to go ahead and, and adopt the 900,000, you know, potential births um, and, and not go overseas and, and uh, to get to do adoptions, but, you know, well, okay, let, let's see that happen. I, I, I support that. Um, so, I... Um, I do think that's very problematic. I, I, I think, you know, the conservative nature of the Supreme Court will be um, very problematic for a lot of individuals. Um, I, I think there could be an overturn, overturning of, of the gay rights. Um, you know, I, I can't really say what to think of the charges against him. I wasn't able to listen to the hearings, but it did sound like it was a he said, she said um, issue. However, I do think that, you know, our country is going to be set back a lot. Um, now, real quickly, um, it, it really um, discourages me when I hear people like Charlie say, oh, well, let's screw the Fourth Amendment because law, um, police officers need more um, ability to go after people with warrantless wiretapping and the sorts. Right. Um, the Patriot Act should be eliminated. Um, okay, and your my time. question is, who will guard the guards? Your time. Okay. Each speaker gets two, to min two minutes to wrap up. Get up there. Each speaker gets two minutes. Cops. We'll cut you off at two minutes. Go, Ted. Um, speaking to this gentleman in the back, um, I think uh, respectfully, with all due respect anyway, um, this is willful ignorance. Um, when you said um, that we're talking about theories without facts, uh, these false flags, you know, no facts, no evidence, please. Okay, I ha I've had extensive uh, presentations personally, but in addition, uh, in addition, you can uh, look up a whole lot of evidence. Uh, you just have to be blind to be talking about uh, uh, these things, 9-11, uh, uh, chemtrails. Uh, I, ha I did a six-part uh, uh, series on, on the moon um, landing hoax. Okay, all right. And you still you think that those aren't facts? What, what what is your definition of facts? Don't answer. I don't have enough time. Okay. Um, Tim Tim, I think capitalism um, is is not the, our primary problem. I'm not personally. I'm not an anti-capitalist. Uh, problem is uh, individual uh, mega capitalists controlling our lives. Okay. Uh, you know, individual uh, or rather small enterprise uh, 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 competition, com competitive capitalism, I don't have a, a problem with. I think uh, that it's better than uh, absolute planning by, you know, uh, an, right. a, a, a uh, It's called mercantilism and exactly what Adam Smith railed against. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, okay, so, um, and one other thing, uh, well, somebody said there's the deep state and then there's capitalism. Uh, I don't know if you're still here. Oh yeah, uh, uh, I forget his name. Um, the problem is, uh, I mean, we talked about uh, capitalists 
uh, okay. uh, Rockefeller, Morgan, the Rothschilds, okay, having such extreme power. Uh, that is the deep state. So, so it's not a, a, a sharp division like, like, you're, like you're saying. That's all I have to say. All right. Two minutes. Yeah, um, two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I just really agree with uh, Ted, what he says. Um, the, you know, facts are facts, history is history, and what's scary about, I agree with what Ellen said, uh, I wrote a, like a manifesto or declaration of independence last night to hoping it would get out. You know, these are the rights that will be overturned. Um, but the unions, the uh, abuse of power is reality, as um, as this gentleman has said many times. That uh, you know, it's it's as old as the history books, and um, it's interesting. I've been doing research into my family was the first family in Virginia, and they, you know. Um, which, it, it sounds almost like gone with the wind, but it, there were some cases where it, it wasn't quite as evil slavery as, um, but you've always got to be willing to look look beyond the fairy tales and the, that we've been told and, and look at our own part in it. I had to look at my own stepfather and, and really, just, I think it's very hard to do to look at your own state. That's what a state crime against democracy Lance DeHooven wrote a book about um, conspiracy theory in America and um, why is it that so few people believe these theories and that it's just really hard to imagine our own government was complicit in 9-11 and um, you know it's, it's we'll just go into denial um, but, uh, but if we don't identify that's the solution um, but you've got to diagnose something for exactly what it is, and we have the right to that. They don't have that abuse of power to lie to us, to deceive us, um, you know, and, and we Your let time do is up. That's Charlie, let's change. go. That's why we need free speech forums. <laughs> We're trying to get going. Charlie, you got two minutes. Can say, please. All right, let's see. Thank you. I want to thank both my partners. Uh, for well, for not saying I'm there, even though they were somewhat off the mark. Uh, every uh, every group of three or more that gathers to discuss foreign affairs or the international affairs does not constitute a conspiracy. Uh, and, you know, and, and as one gentleman pointed out, who said I clearly was the winner in this. <laughs> evenings for that. Uh, regarding the Patriot Act, I was one of the founding members of the Chicago Coalition uh, for Civil Liberties and Rights. Regarding the Patriot Act, uh, we still maintain a Yahoo group because we were concerned about it at Red Squad type veterans. Uh, it, the group has not, although we had a Yahoo group, we have not had to get traffic about one a year. And the group was disbanded. Now, the conspiracy people will say 9-11 was undertaken entirely to pass the Nefarious Patriot Act, and we're the watchdog group, and that's why you gotta gather your facts. Because I'm in the watchdog group, I maintain even the website, and we couldn't find anything to watch. It was administered by federal employees in a responsible fashion, apparently still is, in the normal conformance of their law enforcement duties. Yet, for some reason, that's not good enough. And even ACLU does not pursue it, our group does not pursue it. We still exist, but we don't have anything to do because we don't have anything to claim about. I'll switch to another issue. Investigations is something I know about because I was involved in Congress on this. Your two minutes are up, Charlie. Oh, We're going to get this mess right. out of I'm here. Take another Andy, Andy, Andy yeah. dismiss this real quick because it's got a minute left. The, uh, I didn't know we had two Time's minutes. Up, Charlie. Charlie. Two minutes. That's We're out of time. Oh, all right. Yeah. You can't get home to the rules. Get the hell out. All right. I'll tell you about it. 
Get a little salt and tell us. Uh, okay. Hey, man, I'm unbelievable. Uh, it was an invigorating evening. We hope Our to group see doesn't do week. anything. What's the group? Is We're on the Patriot Act group. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have the absolutely yeah. nothing. But you think, oh my God. Did you watch the movie Snowden? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.